<laughs> and welcome once again to Liberty Lounge. I'm Johnny B from over on the YouTube. To my left is Jared of Guns and Gadgets. And all the way out in California, I'm sure he's, I'm not looking down currently, but I'm sure he's waving at us. That's Anthony, the arms scholar on this podcast. We're going to have a little fun. I want to talk a little bit about the industry today and the firearms industry, the 2A industry, and all of the inner workings of that. Fellas, tell me I'm wrong. It's something I've been thinking about. Sometimes when you're in the forest, you can't see the trees. And it's hard when you're in the industry to see things. And a friend of mine who is not in this industry at all, I was talking to them about the whole idea of a paid shill. And I think for anybody that's listening, there's this theme that is woven in and out of the firearms world, the social media world when it comes to guns, is that if you show a gun, you're a paid shill. Or if you take any money at all, you're a paid shill. And this individual, she said, what is that? And so I told her, she said, everybody on social media is, is doing that, but only, and here's the, here's the point, only in the firearms world do the end users, the viewers freak out if somebody makes money. Jared, we have a business, we're running it. Is, is it unique to the firearms world as much as that friend of mine told me it was? I think it is uh, because everybody you look at that is employed is doing something in exchange for money, whether it's a service, uh, you know, a product, whatever it is. And that's what people on our side of the aisle in the firearms industry are doing there. It may be just because it's a non-traditional way to make money that people are uncomfortable with or jealous with. But the makeup artists that are doing their faces and blowing out their hair and doing all that stuff, they're making money too. But and here's the deal, and I know we're going to go to this. There is one, a nameless. We're not naming names. Anthony, no names. There is one YouTuber like six years ago that banged the drum about and used the words paid shill, and it stuck. One moron. And I, I do think people need to be honest, but I watch firearm, firearm reviews nonstop. I think it's nice when guys are like, hey, I got this for free. Anthony, you've been through this. Uh, your recent test with Bear Creek, you paid. You specifically paid for that just so you weren't a paid shield, correct? Yeah, I mean, I don't think that was mainly the calculus. It was just more. Uh, there's a. This is one of those things, like Johnny said. There are so many layers to what you could talk about here. With the Bear Creek Arsenal thing, it was in some ways. Let me do an independent test, but also I'm not a gun review guy. I don't get paid to do gun review views and gear reviews on my channel. Um, so I'm not going to reach out to a company to say, hey, send me this because I'm not going to make a, a dedicated video on it necessarily for my channel. It's just more for my own personal knowledge. But there is it was also in some ways to protect myself because there is and, and we can talk about this a little bit when it comes to the gun review world and guys that do that stuff. There are companies that will send products and there is an exchange sometimes of products for the review. There are sometimes exchange of the product plus money for the review, depending on how big of a reach you have. Now, that's not to say that because you are getting the product or because you're getting paid, they are buying a positive opinion. Now, I know all my friends that do gun reviews, you cannot buy their opinion, no matter what gun you send them. And, and I mean, my friends, there may be guys in the industry, I know Johnny's shaking his head, the people I know who do gun and gear reviews, like, I don't think you can buy their opinions. Because in this world, anything that I want or anything these guys want, they can buy themselves. They can get access to you. They don't need a company to send it to them, to, to then buy their opinion so they can sell it through a YouTube video. But one of the interesting things that can happen during this exchange is if a company is sending you a specific firearm to review, if they know they're sending it to a specific reviewer, they can cherry pick the item that they are sending you. So that was also one of those reasons why I bought Bear Creek on my own so that I knew, you know, it wasn't something that they were doing extra QC on just because they saw my name or, you know, saw someone affiliated with me in some way. I was just going to get the product that the average person would get if they ordered it through Bear Creek. But, you know, that's just one little nuance to all of this. There's, there's a lot. Um, and I can't remember your specific question originally, John, but yeah, I, I bought it my, myself to protect Thanks, myself. Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Now we're all three gearheads. We all watch videos on, on gear and uh, how do y'all feel like I, I, and, and full disclosure, I have reviewed firearms for years and I have been a paid firearms reviewer for pewpewtactical.com as well as for my own media. And I've been featured on a lot, a lot of different places. 
And the, the fun thing about Pew Pew Tactical is it's third party and we would supply our own firearms and we would hold up a gun and say, hey, we have got no affiliation with Smith & Wesson. Or sometimes we would we would get guns from a third party distributor like Brownells or Midway or something and say, hey, mm -hmm. random company sent this to us. So we were always very open about where we got our gear from. And if I get free guns, I'll say I got this as a courtesy as a viewer, and when you're all are watching this, Jared, how do you feel about that? Like when you're watching gun reviews, because you know almost nobody in YouTube buys their own guns. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, like Anthony was saying, if you're paying attention to what the person is saying who's doing the review, then you can tell if they're being honest or not. Like Chris, my buddy, Honest Outlaw, they, it doesn't matter what you pay him. If your gun sucks, he's going to show it. It's in his sucking. name. Yeah, he's going to show it sucking, and he's going to say that it sucks. And, uh, you know, it's. I, I think that there is a different way that people should look at it. These companies in the firearms industry, they can't buy advertisements on TV anymore. They can't buy it in anything other than, like, firearm-specific print media or social media. So I look at it the way, like if they're sending the product or paying whatever on top of it, then it's them buying advertising space. It's not necessarily buying a good review, but it's getting their product to where people are watching. But that that does come with some, you know, because Anthony's like, no, none of my friends would ever take money ever, ever, ever. No, no, I didn't say that they wouldn't take money. I said take I don't want money for don't a positive review. A positive review. I think there is nuance that, that came into my mind. I, there is inherent biases with everything. And some of these guys have relations, let's just say, not any specific brand for any reason, but let's say Springfield Armory, they send out a gun. Uh, they're blasting a new gun out that they make. They send it to a bunch of people. There is, maybe these guys are trying to give their honest review, but there's that inherent bias behind that of like, hey, I have this relationship with, you know, Kevin over at Springfield Armory. And anytime they release a new gun, they send it to me. I really like them. I like what they do. Maybe this isn't my favorite gun, but I'm not going to bash it like I would any. So there's there's stuff that can happen in the industry where those biases bleed in or someone doesn't want to burn a bridge with the company because we've seen that happen when a company puts out a crap gun and someone says, hey, this this gun is a piece of crap. You pretty much are burning that relationship down because one of the interesting things about the gun industry also is a lot of these companies or people in them are pretty sensitive <laughs> they tend to be yeah. pretty sensitive. Yeah. See my Glock 44 review video. <laughs> yeah. I think your point is, is cause this is a nuanced uh, situation. And the bottom line is we have a lot of companies that need to get their products out there. People are not shooting like they used to. We feel like they are cause we're immersed in this world, but kids aren't shooting today. They're playing video games and companies do need to get their stuff out there. And they use guys like us. Uh, but to Anthony's point that there, there can be subconscious bias as well. It's the reason the waitress hands you a piece of candy right before she asks you for your tip. You have this natural, somebody gives you something you naturally want to give back. Even your subconscious does. So that's part of it. Plus Anthony's point of you want these relationships to keep going and you have a positive view on gun X and because you won't gun why when it comes out in two or three years. But it's not uh, it's not just one box of the industry because every company is different. I did a video where I just destroyed a high point. And I mean, I mean, it was funny and I just I just wore it out. High point loved it and sent me one. And I had bought the one that I was making fun of. I bought it. And they reached out and they're like, Johnny, we love you. Can you keep doing more? And so they embraced the sort of negative Mm -hmm. place. Now, on the other hand, I do think there's a lot of guys that are taking guns and just not, uh, it's not the end of the world. We're not talking about Hitler and Mao Zedong here. We're not talking about the Cambodian killing fields. We're talking about a dude taking a piece of metal and not being honest with it. But you go to the surf surfboard industry, those guys aren't like having to have these conversations. I think it's only in the gun world. How did we get to this point? It's a good question, man. I think that uh, everybody in our industry is very, like Anthony said, some people are very, very, very easy to to get them angry at you. They're very emotional. They're very touchy. It is Pride Month, so we can <laughs> celebrate all of these, all of these little, these little pencil-necked men going, "Oh, you didn't tell me that you got that Ruger for free. I'm mad. You're a paid shill." I, I think part of it is is where the country has evolved to as well. Like you, you can't really people are very weak now as far as hearing negative 
responses to what they think is their best effort. You know, like, uh, hey, kid, you you suck at baseball. Go sit down. It's not like that anymore. It's like, oh, you get a trophy because you went 0 for 75 this year. Good job. Can't wait to see you next year. And it's in, it's just permeated through everything. And it's in the firearm industry as well. Like what company wants to hear that something they put millions of dollars of R&D in sucks? And none. And, you know, if you are too, too hard on them, then they're going to remember, which is which is fine, because if it, if the gun, if the product sucks that bad, people need to know about it. Eight years ago, I remember when I first started really getting into this world, there was, uh, you know, all the money is changing hands. This is, I mean, most of YouTube has money to, with with medium to large channels. There, There's money changing hands in some way or services changing hands or something is happening. And there was one dude who was actually running commercials. There was a lot of dudes saying, hey, here's this gun, and I think it's really cool. And the whole thing was an ad, but they never told you it was an ad. And there was one guy who would say, blah, 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 talking about X, Y, or Z, and then stop and go, today's episode is brought to you by A, B, and C. And he did a hard commercial, and I adopted that. And I switched to hard commercials, and now today... Uh, because that one dude, I think he kind of pushed all of us in that direction. It was uh, TGC, John Patton. He was the only one that was doing hard commercials. And now there's hard commercials out there. I love how TFB TV, how James does his. He has a hard commercial at the beginning. John, 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 Glock. And then he'll tell you. He's always like, hey, I'm sponsored by Glock. I am biased because I'm a little Glock fanboy. Both of y'all, y'all both do hard commercials. Mm -hmm. I think you have to. I mean, the, the FCC requires it pretty much. You have to put that little you know, this video contains an ad and you're supposed to, some people don't all the time, but in the absence of that, you have to make it obvious that you are, you know, taking a sponsorship, taking money or it's an ad. Um, you know, more people probably should do it than they do, but I think it, it, it's, it's a good way to let your, your viewing audience know that, all right, this is, this is somebody who's paying the bills, you know, for this, this segment. And it's a good thing because they help support that channel but, and it's also a good thing because if your channel's doing this for an, you know, for a job, for, for an employment, then they need to be compensated. And yeah. somehow people don't really relate that. Anthony, you've, you've, you're doing hard commercials. Is there benefit there? I know that I love my sponsors. I do. I, I, I have relationships with my sponsors. They literally put groceries on my table and I think it's great. And I am way above board to say, hey, these people are paying my bills. For you, and I know they're paying your bills as well. You love your sponsors and you're doing hard commercials. How's that working? Yeah, I, I think it's also very content specific. Like the things me and Jared do, since we're not doing gun reviews, it's it's really hard to be to say, you know, oh, Springfield came out with, you know, the echelon or whatever. I'm gonna review this and not disclose that, hey, it was sent to me and, and this is pretty much an ad. The type of content me and Jared make and, and you make Johnny. It's it's not that type of review process necessarily. I know Johnny and Jared early on, you guys did a lot of gear reviews and all that, but now we tend to be a little bit more talking head. So it's just cleaner to be like, hey, this video is sponsored by, and I literally have I'm drinking, you know, first form, you know, and it, it's it may yeah, it's not relevant to the specific video, but they're a sponsor. They're helping to fund the channel, keep it going, keeping it free to people, so I don't have to put it behind a paywall or anything like that, um, which I don't think I would anyways, but. You know, it's just people who like what you're doing on the channel. They want to spread the two-way news. They want to support what you're doing. And with with sponsors, every single sponsor is different. Every single sponsor wants different things. Uh, first form, I mean, I used their products way before they ever reached out to me. But the reason I got connected with them is uh, the CMO of the company, uh, the chief director of marketing, and a couple other guys internally watched the channel. And they reached out and like, hey, we want to support the channel. Has nothing to do with the farmers community. They just believe in, and this isn't an ad or anything like that. <laughs> it's all right, but you know that's how these relationships built. It's it's companies that like what you're doing on your channel. And they just want to support you, keep it going, keep the content free. Um, so yeah, and for my type of content, it's easier just to do a clean cut at the beginning, get the sponsor out of the way, and just move on to the the actual specific content that you know or whatever topic. But I wanted to go back to something, Johnny. You were talking about how. Uh, why is it that in our industry specifically, there's this narrative that goes around about people, you know, in the gun industry having sponsors, and you don't see that in any other social media industry, you don't see it in makeup, you don't see it in finance, YouTube channels, you don't see it in anything like that. And I think really, it is, in my personal opinion, it's because the firearms industry in its own right, is a very 
for lack of a better word, old industry. It is an industry that really holds on to evolution. It's one of those industries that still, for the life of me, I don't understand is, is holding super tight to like print media and magazines. And they'll dump hundreds of thousands of dollars into, into magazines. And, and they're also just not super on par with any innovation. That's why you see these trickle down effects of like, hey, this gun came out 10 years ago and they just re finally released a new one, but it made this tiny, tiny tweak to the firearm. Nothing super crazy innovative happening. That's why when you go to SHOT Show, you see 5,000 companies that are selling the same black AR and, and black, you know, Glock clone. You know, it's just, that's the way our industry is. It's behind a lot of other industries and specifically when it comes to social media. I mean, it's crazy how many times I've had conversations with big, big companies, big manufacturers, big farms companies who don't really understand what YouTube is. Mm -hmm. who don't understand what podcasts are, who don't have an Instagram presence or don't have a Twitter presence. That just shows you like how far behind this industry is of a lot of industries. And I think that then sometimes trickles down into the audience or to, you know, people who are also just generally within the industry. So I think that's probably, I, I don't, I don't think this narrative will be around in hopefully 10, 15 years. I think it will try to catch up with some of the other industries out there but i think in my opinion that's i think what's kind of going on there i think the harsh truth is is we have watched guys give reviews they pay they got paid to do them and they do positive reviews for money and they don't tell anybody and they end up selling guns i think that's the bottom line i think we have a history in this uh and I'm I'm a capitalist, man. Go earn, go make money, man. If somebody's gonna pay you to do something that's 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 cool or fun or that you enjoy, go do it. I am all about growing a business. But I think this new trend where guys are being, I think today we're doing a little better. I hear more guys yeah. saying, Hey, I received this gun as a courtesy. And that's really true. That's that's that that's going on a lot in the industry. Radical firearms stopped me one time, and I didn't know a lot about them other than they're dirt cheap. And they stopped me at a show one time and he ran up to me. He's like, hey, dude, I'm so-and-so with Radical Firearms. You got a card? I was like, sure. He goes, I want to send you a rifle. And I was like, hey, man, like, here's the, he goes, no, 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 no strings attached. And he meant it. It was so cool. And so I get this rifle in and he put my logo on. I don't even know how he got my logo. He put my logo on it and he sent it to me. I literally have never heard from them since. <laughs> And I ended up doing a couple reviews on it and it runs great. It's, I wouldn't take it to Afghanistan. But I did a positive review on it, but I told everybody, hey, they sent me this gun for free, and I never heard back. I think that's a pretty good model, Jared, is just uh, no, the no strings attached. Yeah, honesty. Yeah, if, yeah. And, and there's a lot of companies out there that will supply a product, and they're not, I mean, everybody's hoping for a good review, but they're not looking, they'll tell you, like, just be honest. That's all we want is your honest. And what a lot of people don't understand behind the lens is, the companies that we've been dealing with all these years, they'll say like, the only thing we ask is if there is a problem, let us know and give us an opportunity to fix it before that, you burn the house down. That is something that I think viewers, I think uh, often they won't hear this other places. That's something I forgot to mention like 15 minutes ago. There is an unwritten law among our world. If the gun doesn't run, send it back or talk to them before going public. And I think that's a level of, of, and I get it. These are PR majors. These are marketing guys. Let us work on it. And I think for me as a reviewer, that needs to be part of the actual review. Hey, I got one. It broke and I sent it back. I had a CMMG that, that the extractor popped the day I got the gun. And so I just turned it around and made it be, and I'm sponsored by CMMG. So is this knucklehead. And I just turned it into part of the narrative and I did a review on their customer service. And, but I think that's a big one is there, to your point, there is this unwritten law. If it breaks, you don't go public to the camera. You go straight back to the marketing department. Yeah. And then if it still isn't fixed, well then, you know, then you, you're going to be honest anyway, but then you just say, look, I gave them an opportunity. Like yeah. TGC, I just watched a video of theirs the other day, and he talked about a company where they sent a gun back to get repaired, and it came back and still didn't work. And that's when he did the video and, and added all that into it. And that's just yeah. on it. Yeah, and that's not to say, like, I know some people maybe will think in there, like, oh, well, you should just let people know. We're not saying that the creator specifically themselves won't let the audience know, like, hey, I had this issue and send it back to them. It's just sometimes there's that. I mean, I don't do gun reviews, so I don't, I don't deal with a lot of this stuff, but 
you know, you you deal with whatever company, sometimes they're sending prototypes. Sometimes they're sending early, 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 early prototypes out for guys to test, to, to feel out. I mean, they're not the final ones that go out to people and they just say like, hey, we're still trying to figure out what's going on with this. Let us know if we can QC it, if we can fix it, we'll do it. But they don't say like, oh, then don't tell your audience. Most of the guys will say, hey, I've had this issue and they'll, they'll put it in their video. Like I had to send it back. This is what happened. I think, you know, Grantham's done that on plenty of his videos of like PSAs and, and other things. And, and usually everybody's, usually the big guys are above the board. They disclose, you know, hey, if I got this, um, you know, this was sent to me. I was paid for this. They're a sponsor. Most of the time in all those videos now, like Johnny said, that stuff gets disclosed. Uh, I don't know. One of the things I want to ask you guys, I don't know if you've dealt with this because again, I'm not a gun review person. Did you guys ever, cause I know when certain companies are about to release a firearm, there will be like one or two specific firearms that will then go to channels and it'll be like the same one. And it kind of just goes through the loan cycle of, of like this creator, when this creator is done, it goes to that creator. I think a lot of people don't understand that also. Like sometimes you'll watch five different videos and that same handgun or rifle went to each one of those five guys. And so like, if this guy did a, you know, 2000 round review on this handgun and it, it worked well, well, it also was at these four other guys before that. So just something. To yeah. When, when Palmetto state armory was releasing the dagger, they had one dagger and that they were going to do a hundred thousand rounds through 20 guys do 5,000 rounds. I think it was, I got right here in this in this room. I got the very first dagger that came out of PSA, and it was brand spanking new, and it was going to be abused. And it was funny they asked uh, Pew Pew Tactical to do this, and I was going to be the tester for it. And then I said, "Okay, well, here's my address for the ammo." And Palmetto State got real quiet. Oh yeah. And and he's like he's like because mo yeah, most companies will throw in some ammo or not. You just tell the viewer, "Hey, I got this ammo for free, but just be honest about it." And I said, uh, "Y'all want us to do this? Sure, we'll do it." I'm happy to shoot the gun. Here's where you send the ammo. And he went dead quiet. It was so funny. And I said, dude, I'm not burning 5,000 5, rounds of ammo if you don't send it. And he got so angry. But yeah, to your point, that one gun, and, and they all, all the videos were released on one day. 20 reviewers did the same gun, and it ran. Jared, you've seen the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. I just think it's funny that they expect you to spend a couple grand just for the kindness he of viewing it. <laughs> he huffed into the phone and he goes, uh, he goes, I have, he goes, let me go look. He said, I, I think I have some stuff in the back that I've sat aside for a rainy day. I'm like, you're freaking Palmetto State Armory. They were doing like something like a third of a billion dollars that year. I was, when I was doing reviews, I never, well, I, I mean, I wasn't big enough to ask for ammo, but, uh, John Patton is the one who told me, he's like, what do you mean you're not asking for ammo? Like, you're spending money to do these videos. You need to get ammo for it. We we never asked for ammo. Uh, it was it was they came to us and asked us to do this project. Yeah, right. So sure, we'll do it. And and it was great. I never asked for ammo unless they came to me. A lot of times I'll just say, hey, can I borrow a gun? I borrow a lot of guns. And I tell the viewer, hey, I borrowed this. It was really cool. But there was another one that hit, and it was a CMMG. It was years ago, and they were passing around. They had, I think, three guns, and they were passing them around. I uh, get mine. I open it up, and it's rusted. All the bolts are rusted, and it's just beat to crap, and there's mud in the box. So I called my rep at CMMG, and I'm like, why did you send me a rusty gun? And he goes, well, we didn't send you a rusty gun. That wasn't sent by us. It went here, and then it went here, and then it went to VSO Curtis. His name is VSO Curtis, <laughs> and VSO Curtis destroyed this gun in a mud puddle, then packed it into a box and shipped it to Tennessee. And I texted him, and I said, what sort of rusty bullcrap are you sending me? He has been laughing about that for like seven years. You remember that time I sent you a rusty gun? Yes, VSO Curtis, I do. But I think it's a great point is a lot of times these guns are beat up, Back to the word honesty. Just let the viewers know here's what's going on. I also think this. I think a lot of reviewers push guns harder than they need to because it's sexier or more interesting on camera for things to break. We do need to be hard on guns. Absolutely. They don't, don't need to be babied. It's a tool. But do y'all think that some guys push them too hard just to try to make them pop? Um, I think maybe some do. I don't think it's a, a, a normal uh, process, but there are some that would rather get that 
uh, for lack of a better term, they get that dramatic reaction. They want to see something break because they know it'll it increases views because we've all done A/B tests, and then like you say, I love this water, and you'll get four views, and you can say, I what I hate about this water, and you can get forty million views. Um, so yeah, I think that's part of it. I think that uh, we need to abuse guns. I just think once again, for the fifteenth time, it comes back to honesty. And here's here's yeah. what we're doing. There was a uh, he's a friend of mine. I'm not even going to say his name, but there was a YouTuber one time, and I love it. Anytime we talk about this whole shield thing or whatever, this guy's not a shield, but he was he got the first Glock out of the factory for one of the new Glock. I think it was a Glock forty four. Was a twenty two long rifle. Yeah, the yeah. Crash. He got the very first one, and I think I got like number two or three for Pew Pew Tactical. It was really cool. And uh, the gun itself was uh, sort of dumb. Anyway, in his uh, video, he's like, pop, pop, and his voiceover goes, total reliability. And as soon as he shot that round, there was a stove yeah. pipe stuck up. And, he, and I thought it was a joke. And holy smokes, he came back and made it right. He's like, yeah, I did have some failures. In, uh, but it's just interesting when guys are... That was maybe just an oversight, but I don't think guys are always as honest as they need to need to be. Today's episode is brought to you by TriStarTrading.com, home of the softest tees in the game. Jared is not wearing one today. Neither is Anthony. However, I am because I am loyal. Hey, you want to save? Use code Liberty when you head to TriStar Trading. Patches, flags, and the softest tees in the game. TriStarTrading.com. All right. Speaking of the industry, uh, there's a company called Leviathan Group, and full disclosure, all three of us have had relationships or have relationships. It's a it's a mix mosh, mix mash, and this uh, company is a talent agency. And what they do is they represent talent. I think the short version is if you go to Leviathan and you want to advertise your product on new media, you hand them a block of money and then they chop that money up and they get a bunch of YouTubers and Instagrammers and and tickety talkers and Twitter people to do new media. It's a pretty simple and seamless project. Recently, Grand Thumb dropped them and it, he, evolution of business. He's growing or whatever. Mike's a friend of mine also, but it was just a, a an announcement. Hey, I'm now moving into my own. I think that that when he released that 10 second video to say, hey, I'm, I'm dropping Leviathan, I think it was just saying, hey, advertisers, let's have a conversation. It was that easy. My point is this. I think it's fascinating. The flurry of social media posts and the people people been making memes about it. Only in our industry are people making memes about the talent agency for their favorite influencer. How I think it is bizarre that people care. A, do they care? And B, if they do, why? Anthony, do people care? And why? I think it's a subset of people. I don't. I don't think the uh, a big majority of people who watch our videos or watch anybody's videos are that in tune with who Leviathan is, what they do, or really care about any of those nuances. Um, with Leviathan itself, so I'm not currently with Leviathan. Um, I was before they used to be, and like, and really what Johnny said is, is the most accurate description of Leviathan. At best, they're a talent management company. They are an intermediary between a company and the creator themselves. Um, and they just kind of act as your agent and, and for a lot of guys, it's it's easier to have Leviathan and their team handle some of these discussions because, like I said, I'll I've had plenty of companies. We all every single day will have our emails get hit with companies or Instagram. They'll hit us up on Instagram like, hey, we want to work with you. We want to do X, Y and Z. We want to send you this yada, yada, yada. And I just I and a lot of guys, we just don't have the time to field all of these emails and go back and forth with some of these companies who send you email chains and be like, hey, let's jump on a quick call. And then two hours later of your day, you, you're stuck on this call with this company and then maybe nothing's going to come of it. So, you know, Leviathan does a lot of that and they they make sure creators get paid and they do all that. Um, I don't, it, I think it's just more of those people who are interested in that are just more curious about, I guess, how the sausage is made and the mystique of that and what goes on in the creator world is what piques their interest. And they, maybe, maybe there's just that weird thing, like Jared said, where people always want to make something out to be more negative than what it really is. When in all reality, Leviathan is just a talent agency and they don't make anybody do anything. 
And I can tell you that for certain. They never made me do anything. They could never make me do anything. I know they can never make Johnny do anything or Jared. Oh, and I've got a price. You want me to? I will do anything for a oh. check. I will sell out tomorrow. <laughs> I'm in. Like just, and it would take a lot less zeros than than you think. So anybody out there out there that listening, if you want to own my soul, it is for sale for cash. Jared, people do care about this stuff because you know Anthony says, okay, it's a smaller group of people. I think there's I think a lot. Small and loud. Small and small, loud. Okay. So yeah. small but vocal minority. I see it in the, in the comment sections nonstop. Oh, so and so is a from Leviathan. I think it's bizarre. It's another oddity, another facet of our industry that's weird. Yeah, it is. And I, I think Anthony hit on something too small and loud. It's if you pay attention, it's usually the same. You can see some of the same repetitive screen names and, you know, like channel names that will take part of those conversations. Um, and I think it could be part of it where people, like I before I was approached by Leviathan to to actually be part of the tribe. Um, I was I hate that name by the way. Part, part of the tribe. I know. I I, 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 like, I was like, I'm oh. gonna be in the tribe, and we're gonna make money through honesty, and we're gonna just gather together through a a, a, a squid tribe, the Leviathan Squid. <laughs> I hate it. I hate so, that name. I remember before I was approached, um, <laughs> I was envious. Because like I, I am someone who's very, you guys know, I, I'm not comfortable asking people for anything. So f to do that as as a full time business, it was something that I was not just comfortable with asking. For. What were you envious of? Uh, how do I get somebody to do that for me? And like obviously they have connections that I can't, I can't do on my own. Uh, and they helped elevate my business. They did. I'll give them, I'll give them all credit for that. They've done a lot to help my channel get to where it is as far as operating as its own. I no longer have to work a hundred hours a week at a other at another job to, to fund the channel. Um, so they've helped me out tremendously. They've helped a lot of uh, all of the creators that are, you know, are at a better place financially because they have Leviathan, you know, can they take everybody in under their wing? No. And I think sometimes maybe a few, few people might have a little envious or, or, or jealousy or, you know, why can't I do that? Or why am I not good enough? Cause I felt that and like, why, at the time, I was like, I was the only person doing 2A News and nobody else on the planet was on YouTube. So, like, news isn't cool, <laughs> but it wasn't. <laughs> you know, we had to make it cool before uh, it was an acceptable platform. I think this, I think everybody, and I mean, I'm going to use the word everybody, every word that I have ever read online in the comment sections about Leviathan has been incorrect. I mean, I mean, every. I'm not being just exaggerating. Nobody has nobody has any idea. They think it's this this group. They think it's because I'll have guys hit me. And they're like, Johnny, you hang out with all those Leviathan guys. Like, I don't even know those half of those Leviathan guys. Leviathan's about thirty percent of my uh, monthly advertising. They've been great to me. They come. They say, Hey, here's five projects. Which one do you want? And or which one? You know, to Anthony's point, you can just say no to any of it. It's been seamless and easy, and and a good relationship. And they just say, "Hey, would you like to advertise for this company or this?" I'll say, "I'll take both," and that's it. That's the whole thing. But people love conspiracies, as do I. But they think it's this massive group of people that are shilling products out there for money. And I also think this, and this is back to the original conversation, that. It's almost like it's only in our industry are you made to feel guilty for making money. And I have people all the time, Johnny, oh, you're just shilling this product and you're just this. I'm like, you go to work. Nobody says that to a lawyer, oh, you're doing that for money. And I think that's another interesting thing. That woman um, that I was married to, she used to say that. We'd have these conversations and she would say, I think it's really weird in the gun industry that people get upset if you make money in the gun industry. Does it come back to jealousy? They get really upset if you get a free gun. I think that's, yeah, I do think, honestly, I do think that's a big part of it because uh, people are out there punching a clock, working nine to five, you know, coming home dirty, sweaty, hungry, tired, exhausted. And they, what they see is like a four to eight minute video of somebody sitting in an, in a studio and they think that's all it is. And, you know, a lot of I mean, the big creators we have are making, they're doing really, really, really well for themselves. So, I mean, PewDiePie was making 20 million a year, five years ago for Goofing off on video games. I mean, yeah, that will cause the average hardworking American to be, if not jealous, to be, uh, to to really maybe hate that that part of society because it's it's new, it's new media, and this is how people are are getting paid. And you know, it's uh, if it, it, I saw a, a, an article about a year ago 
that, you know, when we were younger, schools would always ask, you know, kids, what do you want to grow up to be? Little Johnny, what do you want to do? And you say, like, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a firefighter. Now everybody says, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be an influencer. Yeah, yep. it's, it's, and it's not comfortable for people who aren't familiar with it. So yeah, I, I do think jealousy is a part of it. I do think that there's also people who despise the ability to whatever influence or to talk on a, you know, a camera like we are now and to make money on it. It's, it's just not comfortable for them. This is total honesty. One of the original reasons that I did, did YouTube and this is a hundred percent. I was watching, you know, we've talked about this before. I was watching a thousand hours of Hickok 45 and watching IV 88, 88, 88, 88, Eric and watching these, the OG guys. And I had this little idea in the back of my mind, if I do that, I might get a free gun. Because that was like this, this, I mean, like this forbidden territory of, oh my gosh, I might get a free gun. It was funny. I reviewed a Henry, as in Henry Rifles. I did a review of their coffee mug. And they, uh, I think I picked it up at a show or something. And I did a negative review of their stupid coffee mug. And you can, it's, it's out there somewhere. And they loved it so much, they sent me their survival rifle, the AR-7, I think it's called. It's a $175, $175 little plastic gun that unfolds. And they just sent it, no strings attached. They said, hey, we love that stupid video you did on our mug. Here's a gun. God bless you. And like they just, they just sent it for fun. I still have that email and I have the invoice. I'm going to frame it one day because I got a free gun from YouTube. And that for me, that was a big, big, big deal. Today, I am at the point where I realize that anything you take now has strings attached. There are companies say, hey, here's, here's a gift, whatever. But if it's a big project, uh, there's going to be strings attached. I wanted a Geisley rifle about a year ago. And I went and bought it and paid full retail for it. And a friend of mine said, you're an idiot. I said, I agree. He said, you could have just called or emailed Geisley. I was like, yeah, but what does that come with? Anthony, what are the strings that come with that? Now I'm going to have to do a video. I'm going to have their marketing rep every two weeks. Hey, man, you had a chance to look at that gun. You had a chance because now he has his monthly nut to take. Anthony, is it better these days just to buy the DAMN rifle and just buy it and never tell a soul what you're doing and not deal with the marketing departments? Yeah, I, I tend to buy everything on my own. Um, like Johnny said, at a certain level, you have to be very careful about reaching out to certain companies for certain things. Um, and even just sometimes having communications with certain companies, because then that then primes them to be like, well, I'm going to send you some stuff. And in your uh, send me your address, I'm going to send you some stuff. And you have, and then he's like, oh, you, hey, you know, I you can't guarantee you. I don't do reviews, especially on my channel. I tell everybody like, hey, I don't do gun reviews. That's not what I do. I'm a two-way channel. I'm a news channel. I have a lot of companies all reach out to me, wanting me to send me stuff. Um, you know, I had a company this week say like, hey, we want to make you an entire gun room of like, um, you know, put stuff on the wall. And I'm just like, hey, you know, I don't do reviews on my channel. Um, it's, I'm just not interested in that. So I say no to a lot of things. I know you guys say no to a lot of things and you have to be very, very careful about having contacts with certain companies because they do, especially because they've had relationships with other creators and they've, some creators have set the precedent of, you know, if you're reaching out to them, if you're having a conversation with them, they expect that like, you're going to ask for a gun or a product. And then in return, they're going to get X, Y, and Z instead of just having, you know, an organic relationship with, you know, whatever company. So I tend to buy everything on my own. I know when we were out at T-Rex Arms, you know, they gave us a couple stuff there. You know, they gave, made us a holster in house, which was really, really cool. We didn't ask them for anything. Um, but I've bought probably thousands of dollars worth of T-Rex uh, products before we even stepped foot in there. And I will, can, and they had even said like, Hey, don't buy anything anymore. Just just, you know, call us, ask us. And I said, no, I'll continue to buy all of my stuff because I also like to support the people I want to support. If I like your products and I like it enough to where I want it, I'll pay for it. I've got the disposable income. I'll use it as a tax write-off. You know, it, it is what it is. All right, let's name some names. Uh, no sponsors. We're not naming sponsors. We're not doing sponsors today. Let's name some names. Who's been good to deal with? I've already mentioned that High Point was a lot of fun. Uh, they, they thought me making fun of their gun was fun. They sent me another one that Henry, they didn't, and I never heard from them again. They just said, hey, thanks for reviewing our stupid coffee mug. They were really easy to deal with. Radical Firearms sent me a gun and never heard from them again. For me, that's really, really cool 
Who for you guys, Jared, who's been fun to deal with a good marketing department? What is a company? We're not talking about the product because we know almost all guns run. That's the, the thing about our industry in the top 80% of, of all of them. There's not, they run, they really do. But what is a company that behind the scenes dealing with their marketing people, dealing with their customer service people or their execs in the suits, who's been fun to deal with? Uh, Brownells, the, the guys and gals at Brownells are, they're our people. They are cut from our cloth. I will, I joined their group of, of the inner circle many years ago and have many lifelong friendships, even for people who are no longer there. We still call each other. We still text each other. Possum Fatback. Yeah. He, worked, he worked there and he's one of us. He is a, he's a gun guy. Yeah. And Possum Fatback is a really good dude, and we're still tight. Here's what here's what I love about you saying that about Brown Ales. Brown Ales, uh, we get together, we'll have like at, a, at an event, they'll rent a rent a house and just have creators over there, and they'll cook or something for us or have beer for us. And the the, well, the thing that I think really speaks to the character of Brown Ales is even after Poss, Possum Fatback had transitioned to a different job. He was still at the Brownells house cooking dinner. I like how cool is that? That the relationships are still there. Yes, solid relationships to the point where, like, if God forbid something happened to me and I needed help, they would be the ones who would help. And you don't get that type of relationship every day. And I'm blessed to to be able to to call them friends. Anthony, who who do you like? Who's been good to deal with in our industry? Name the names. Oh, it's, I mean, T-Rex comes into my mind immediately, but we've harped on that a lot. I'm going to go kind of outside of the specific manufacturer realm. The guys over at GOA, we spent a, we've all spent a lot of time with like Eric and the higher ups and all the, the individuals in GOA. They are 100% no compromise, believe in the second amendment. Also the nicest people would do anything for you. Every interaction I've had with everybody in the organization has been awesome. Um, you know, from their attorneys. I mean, I know we did a, we went to an event. Um, GOA brought me and Jared out. We spent, what was it, like five five days, I think, out in Georgia with them um, in a cabin, fishing, shooting, all that stuff. Um, no strings attached for us. It wasn't like, hey, you know, we're going to bring you out here and you got to make content or, you know, then you have to shill for us and promote GOA. There was nothing like that. It was just, and mainly it was actually cool because they sat us down and they said, hey, what do you think we need to do better? Where should, what should we change? What we need, what do we need to focus on? And you have, you know, the president, vice president and all these higher up execs acts, asking people like me, Jared and, and Eric from Iraq veteran and a bunch of other people, you know, our perspective on things. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's probably one of the experiences in the pe- the group, you know, I spent what at the last shot show, we all had appearance times for, for GOA didn't charge them anything. I didn't charge them an appearance fee. I rarely charge anybody an appearance fee anyways, but didn't charge GOA an appearance fee. And actually we ended up hanging out all almost all day at their booth. We just kind of hit it all day at their booth anyways, because we like spending time with them. So that's what sticks out of my mind. Yeah. For what folks about you, that, are, that are just listening on the, uh, that are not watching on YouTube, you're going to be left out. Jared, what in the H have you been doing to your arm over there? He's been digging. Have y'all been watching that? Re- those of y'all on YouTube, go back and watch the last 10 minutes. He has been digging in his arm, his elbow pit for like the last 20 minutes. What the hell are you doing? I gave blood before I came here and the rap they had was causing me to lose circulation in my hand. So it's, it was time to come off. I actually knew the answer to that, but I just kind of wanted to uh, acknowledge you're over there. <laughs> you're over there like it's an episode of Breaking Bad and tapping off or doing something. I think to answer Anthony's question, for me, I, I, I think for me, it's really refreshing. And a lot of folks don't know this, is that everybody in our industry is not actually in the industry. There's There are companies that are do not give a flying F word about the Second Amendment or your freedom. They only care about the bottom dollar. And I'm a capitalist. Bottom dollar matters. We all own businesses. I'm down with that, but that's all they care about. And for me, it, to see that continuum of how some companies absolutely do care and they do care about our rights and they do stay involved not all of them do. Some of them are, are horrific people. They are horrible to deal with, and they are absolutely donating money to the blue side. For me, a company, to answer Anthony's question, is is Thunder Ranch, and uh, we have a relationship out there, and they are non-compromised, and they are training people to help their families. And if, heaven forbid, something goes bump in the middle of the night, there's people all over America 
that have the skills now to be able to protect themselves, and they are non-compromising in that. And then also just watching Jack and Clint and Heidi and the and Zoop and the whole team, how they interact with the other companies. They don't take money. They don't ask for anything. Uh, they'll hit me and say, hey, because they know I'm a gearhead. What about this or that? And I'm like, just holler at Ricky over that that company. They'll send you one. And Jack will be like, no, I'm not asking for anything. I'm going to pay myself. And there's something to be said for, for that in that they don't want any strings attached. And we've all been there. I would say all three of us have probably got stuff in the mail. Jody gets stuff in the mail. And then you slowly realize there's there's strings attached to this piece of equipment. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, but that's, I mean, this is a business, right? And other businesses are looking to have the light shown on their product. And, you know, if you get the product, they expect, you know, shine a little light back their way. All right. There's a lot of good in our industry. There's a lot of fun that we've got to have. Uh, the three of us have been doing this for nearly a combined, what, like 25 years or something. I mean, we've got a lot of years in in this, doing this world. And my question for y'all, and Anthony, you don't get to say T-Rex arms again. We know you had a good time at T-Rex. Like, we got it. We know it was fun. You got your it holster. It was so much fun, guys. We were like a tribe and we went to T-Rex arms. We were a tribe, <laughs> Jared. So... Here's a question. Other than T-Rex Arms and me with Thunder Ranch and you with uh, your your BFFs at Staccato, <laughs> what is a door that has opened up for you, either something that's been sent to you in the mail, a gift that was given to you, or a trip you've got to go on, got to go on in the industry, then you're just like, holy crap, pinch me. I can't believe I'm getting to do this. Jared, what have you gotten to do that's been fun? Uh, man, oh, I'm blessed that there's been several. Um, I just through you to be able to go out to Thunder Ranch and, and to be welcomed into the home of Clinton Hyde and Heidi was, I mean, pinch me. Um, but then on the other, other than office, Thunder Ranch, Thunder other Ranch. than Thunder Ranch, but on the Thunder other end of the spectrum is like, I, I'm about to go out to the RNC, the Republican national convention as a member of the media. And I, I don't think I belong there. I just, that's not my, I agree. That's not my crew that I don't belong there. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I don't, that's not my thing. I don't do national media, but they want, uh, they want people in new media to start talking to the people there and get them to realize, hey, we're just as valuable, if not more, than legacy media. And to be one of the one of the ones they want there to ask some candidates some questions is is kind of humbling. I'm going to go next. I think for me, and then you open this door for me. Valor Ridge. Valor Ridge is a firearms academy training camp. Um, here in Tennessee, and I knew had known of Reed Hendricks for many years, and I had made fun of him and done memes on him and done comedy about him. Back when he had his long hair, I used to do like some right on dude stuff with him. And and so there'd been a couple little interactions where he'd left a comment on stuff. Ha ha, Johnny, that was funny. And but I'd never met him. And then you roll in from Massachusetts. Valor Ridge is an hour from my house. You drive down here from Massachusetts and go and develop that relationship. I was so jealous that day. We and I drove out to Morristown and we had lunch at that bootleg Mexican place. And I was so jealous of that. And then last fall, uh, you took me out there and we trained. And the people are great. And I'm telling you, non-compromise. The, the weight of my heart is zero compromise on the Second Amendment. I, I, we can argue about anything else, but we're not arguing about that. And then a few weeks ago, we went out and just sat on the front porch in a rainstorm. And had <laughs> we had hot dogs on the front porch and drank a little Coca-Cola. So for me, it's, it's so refreshing in an industry that is riddled with corporate bullcrap and suits that don't care and companies that are doing nothing but siphoning cash off of people to find people out there. For me, it's refreshing to find people that are non-compromised. Yeah, Reed and Rachel are phenomenal human beings and we'll be hanging around with them again this weekend. This weekend, going to hang out with them. That's awesome. Anthony, for you, doors that have opened, what have you loved? Uh, like Jared said, there's so much. Um, uh the one that I think the the first time first ever pinch me moment I had was early on the first time I went to the the very first Gundy's out in Uvalde and me and my wife out went out there middle of nowhere in a rundown little hotel sitting in the <laughs> they drove out the rental car sitting in the parking lot and there was Jared from Guns and Gadgets and Chris from Allen's Outlaw standing in the parking lot and I remember sitting in my my little rental car and I was like hold on I need a second that's Jared from guns and gadgets. 
you know, I had to build up a little courage to get out there. And, you know, and since me and Jared, we've had an awesome friendship. And that was early on. You know, I was probably only making videos for six months at that time, maybe a year or something like that. Um, you know, Gundy's and, and those. But I think the doors that have opened up to me really, I mean, not to get super sentimental, is just the friends, the actual like content creator friends and people that I've built along the way and the people I've gotten to meet like Johnny, like Jared and a lot of our other friends that we spent a lot of time with. I mean, that's, that's the, in my year, we have, we always have a lot of obligations. You know, I've, I've been traveling every other weekend, pretty much to different obligations, range events, speaking engagements, whatever. Um, the things I look forward to the most is going to things like shot show, not because I want to walk the floor and see the booth, but I just want to hang out with my buddies at the circle bar, drink some drinks, smoke some cigars and talk, nonsense with my buddies kind of like what we do here on the podcast so those have been the biggest doors that have opened to me the, the cool thing uh also when i got to have my own first like kind of solo event the first time we did you know an event at route 66 me and reno we've got to do that pretty much every single year those those things have been cool and those have been pinch me moments but a lot of it just is just the friends and people i built and also just meeting a lot of the guys that i watch on youtube before I was ever doing this, like, I mean, I watched the Hickoks and I watched the John Lovells and the Jareds and the Johnnies and all that and getting the Jerry Michelex and all of those people. And I pretty much got to meet everybody at this point. And it, you know, Coleon and all of them and get to have their numbers and, and talk with them. That's been to me, that's the biggest thing. It's those relationships that that I value the most. Your hands on the microphone. I thought you were about to say something. Yeah. No, it's just normal now. I'm just <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> All right. We are at the midpoint of the year, just about. Holy smokes, 2024. It's a rolling right along. What is next for you guys? I don't need a detailed list plan, uh, item by item, but overall, what's the rest of your year going to look like, Jared? Anything fun? Uh, yeah. Next week, heading out to uh, Brownells for GunCon. Uh, that's a huge, it's getting to be a huge event. This is the third one. He'll yell at me if I got it wrong. I think it's number three. And uh, he's got over 1,500 people involved this year. And to see what it's evolved to in, in just a couple of years is amazing. Um, and then um, we got Iraq Veterans Annual Range Day. Not too long from here, we have a friend uh, in Ohio. We're going to his wedding. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff coming up. We're going to go away on, on that same trip. I think we're going to stop by Hidden Hybrid Holsters and uh, hang out with those guys and eat some French fries. They have JoJo fries up in, in Ohio. Should be a lot of fun. I love I love these trips. I'm trying very hard not to travel a lot this year. So I've said no to a couple trips, which you know. But I'm hoping that we get out to, to Valor Ridge one, two, or three times uh, to train a little bit. I think that's important for me. And then in September, I'm headed to Thunder Ranch with my son and for his very first official rifle class. And I mean, how how exciting is that? Oof. And uh, yeah, he took a gun out of my safe the other day and claimed it as his own. I am now down. That, that Geisley, the Geisley I met, mentioned a few minutes ago, <laughs> the Geisley that I bought and I paid full. Re I've never even shot the thing. I bought it, I think, last summer and mm -hmm. I've never shot it. And it's now gone and gone forever. I still haven't shot it. Anthony, rest of your year, any, any highlights coming up? Oh my gosh, we have so much. I mean, I'll be at GunCon also, me and Jared are on a panel. Uh, going to Kershaw's uh, facility in Portland. I'm not, I mean, I'm excited to see the facility, but I don't want to go to Portland, but we're doing you have that. To hold hands. Do you have to hold hands with a guy named Steve or Gary when you go to yeah. Portland? Is it required? Like when you get to the city limits, do you like the rainbow up here and you hold hands with a guy? No? Probably, no? probably. I mean, I'm in California, so it's not anything new. So it is what it is, you know. Happy Pride Month. Uh, yeah, happy Pride Month, everybody. <laughs> uh, I know we got GOA's event in October, I think, right? Is it October? When is that? Uh, they're uh, August. August, yeah. August, it's in August. August. It's called Goals. Yeah. It's in Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah. I'm doing a live show, and it should be fun. We're doing a meme show live. It's Goals. Type it into Google. Goals, goals. GOA. Yeah, Go so we got October. that. Gunowners.org <laughs> slash goals. Yeah. So we got that. I mean, there's there's so so many things. I'm not doing the Iraq veteran this year, but I've done that before. Um, I'm I'm trying to slow down a little bit in the back end of the year. Uh, just I would like to actually be able to take a personal vacation at some point, not have to travel. But you know, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, I need to get back out of Tennessee, and we all need to go train or do something. That's what we need to do. Uh, so we'll probably try to do that back half of the year, and. Then, Probably also when we're at GunCon, me and Jared, maybe we'll do some interviews with some of the guys over there for the podcast. So you guys will hear that also. That'll be that'll probably be fun. Yeah, if you want to come back, uh, we know a guy who runs his own school at Valor Ridge. So we got you. 
Yeah. Anytime you say let's, we say go. Yeah, we need we all three of us need to get together and train really soon. And I'm sure there's going to be a pop up trip here or there. I think for the viewers, rather than hearing our schedules, it may be good for them to know that we're active in the industry and we're out there trying to meet people and figure out who's got their stuff together. We went uh, Christmas before last. The three of us went to hang out with the GOA and spent several days just seeing how the sausage is made. To Anthony's point, and it's just I think these relationships matter. I think there are pockets in the industry. In a conversation today about the industry, there are pockets in the industry that I think are doing really, really well. Anthony's wearing a Warrior Poet Society shirt, and that's a group uh, based out of Georgia that I think they've got a lot of relationships, and they're pushing the industry forward. All good stuff. Last question. What's your carry gun this week, Jared? What's your carry in? Uh, today, I'm actually... Depending on you at the moment, because I just came from a couple errands and threw on some basketball shorts. But uh, this week, I've been carrying my, uh, I went back to a Glock for a couple days. I got my Glock 19. What depends on me? You uh, said it depending on me. Safety. So it's going to depend on you today. So oh. <laughs> you, you're, you're the quarterback today. I am not the quarterback. I am not carrying today. I'm in basketball shorts. I have nothing but uh, my faith in my fellow man to keep me safe. I'm not carrying today. Not at all. There's nothing even in the car. Anthony, what you carrying today? Um. So I've, I've been flipping back and forth. Uh, today was the 43 because as it's getting hot, it's like right now it's kind of nice in California, but it's been like 105 consistent here. So I downsized a little bit. Um, hot as balls. Gonna, I think that's what they call it. Hot, hot as, as balls. balls. On that note, yeah. we're going to say goodbye. This is the Liberty Lounge, and we are glad you found us. However you found us, on behalf of Jared and Anthony, we love you. See you soon. Yeah.